Is Donald Trump the grand wizard promoting bigoted hate crimes? Check this out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. My colleague over on Sirius XM uh, does a, just an absolutely spectacular show there from uh, 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Progress, channel 127. He's a columnist for the Daily Beast and writes some really, really brilliant stuff. Dean of Radio.com is his website. His Twitter handle is at Dean Obadala. And uh, Dean, welcome back to the program. It's great having you. I, you've, you've been writing about how this uh, anti-Muslim hate crime in deep red Missouri produced an unexpected mm -hmm. show of love. Say what? Yes, it did. First, I'm sorry to Ramon, who sounded very excited to speak to you. So I'm sorry I took his time here. But uh, He's on hold. I'll get back to him. The, you'll get back. That's good. And the what happened is, there's, first of all, Donald Trump numerous times during his presidency, and obviously during the campaign in 2016, ginned up hate of Muslims. He understood that played well with the GOP base. Donald Trump did not teach Republicans to hate Muslims. He just realized it plays well. And it's a point I make on my show that Donald Trump is not an aberration. He's a manifestation of what the GOP has been working towards. So right. he learned that during the campaign. He continues here and there the you know, hate of Muslims. So in last month, he retweeted a vile anti-Muslim bigot, a guy named Paul Sperry, who he was retweeting again yesterday who the Anti-Defamation League has called Paul Sperry an anti-Muslim blogger for his spewing of hate of Muslims. Well, Paul P Sperry had tweeted right before Ramadan began, let's see if authorities enforce social distancing order for mosques during Ramadan like they did churches during Easter. And he put the dates of Ramadan. And that jumped out at me because that was really putting a target on the back of Muslims. We knew that. Everyone in our community, when we saw Trump retweet him, knew exactly what Trump was doing there. Um, was telling people, here's Ramadan, go to their masks. They go to their mosques. While you're not liberating states, go to the mosque, do something there. And that's what happened. Five days later, a mosque in Missouri got burned down by a man who has a history of anti-Muslim bigotry. Hmm. And, and, uh, and that's what the was... sad part of it. And the beautiful part, can we tell you the beautiful part, what happened next? Sure, please. Yeah, I'm waiting. The... Okay, so you want to hear the good part. I, I, always, I focus on the <laughs> Trump that gets us here part. What happened was right. the people in the city is Cape Girardeau, Missouri. It's about 40,000 people. They're about 100 miles mm -hmm. south of St. Louis in Missouri. Mm -hmm. This is a county that voted 75% for Donald Trump. This is a very red county. The people in this community didn't just do the perfunctory, we stand with you. They they not only went out of their way and raised money to help Muslims rebuild their mosque, the city, the official city, put a veto together in one day interviewing police members, fire people, the head of the Chamber of Commerce, mayor, council people, saying they cut it all together in a video and put it on the official city website, saying, we love you to the Muslims, we stand with you, we're here with you, uh, you've got nothing to fear. And it was remarkable to see... The contrast of what we see from other Trump supporters, I'm sure many were Trump supporters, just the nature of where it is, who weren't selfish, who were actually compassionate and caring and generous. And it said to me that there are some people on the right who, who, are, who are still caring, who are still, at the end of the day, we're all Americans. There are some Trump supporters, I, I cannot pretend, who are vile and despicable, who are beyond selfish. They're, they're cruel. And that's who Trump is. So this was a beautiful, beautiful, and the person who did it got arrested, by the way. He had a long history of anti-Muslim bigotry. In fact, he had vandalized his very mosque years ago and went to jail for three years for doing it. Now, 10 years later, wow. he's living his life. And to me, it's not a coincidence Trump says this stuff. There's a study that was done a couple of years ago which showed within days of Trump's anti-Muslim tweets, there were a statistical correlation of anti-Muslim hate crimes that manifested in the real world. And I think this is one of them. So I'm glad he was arrested. I'm so happy for the response. It's a beautiful, it's during Ramadan. We're in the middle of Ramadan. So it was great to see this happen. Over in, uh, over on Facebook right now, as Trump has been trashing Governor Rech uh, Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan, um, this doesn't have so much to mm -hmm. do with religion, I think, as it does gender. Um, and, and, and arguably uh, uh, political affiliation, but I'm, I'm laying this out because I've got a larger question for you, Dean. 
um, uh, over on this mm-hmm. Facebook group. Uh, can we please take up a collection for an assassination to put that w- woman from Michigan down? Writes somebody. This is the wow. people of Michigan versus Governor Gretchen Whitmer uh, Facebook group. Uh, another mm-hmm. one says, we need a good old fashioned lynch mob to storm the Capitol, drag a tyrannical ass out on the street and string her up as our forefathers would have done. Uh, wrote a guy named John Campbell Sr. Uh, another one, uh, this is a Michael Smith posted to the group, either President Trump sends in the troops so there's going to be a midnight lynching in Lansing soon. Uh, Dave Me- Meisenheimer of this uh, group Michiganders Against Excessive Quarantine, which has 385,000 members, said, we haven't had any bloodshed yet, but the populace is counting to three, and the other day was two. Next comes watering the tree of liberty with the blood of tyrants. I mean, we see these kinds of things. You know, we saw this with with, uh, Lindbergh in the 40s. We see this with, you know, with Trump now. And yet at the same time, when we pull Mm -hmm. back the the lens of history in a really, really, you know, a 30,000, 50,000 foot view, you saw this kind of racism burn across Europe, burn across Germany, and yet when the when World War II was over and the and the, the racist crimes of Hitler were exposed, there was three generations of revulsion against it, um, over the short term and over the long term. What is the impact, in your opinion, Dean, um, of this kind of, of racist and misogynistic and, uh, and uh, religiously bigoted uh, rhetoric and behavior? Um, and what does it take to burn it out? What does it take to, to create, to, you know, to, to where it gets so bad that there's a backlash? I remember, the, you know, when the Nazis marched in Skokie, Illinois, there was a pretty substantial backlash mm-hmm. against those Nazis. In fact, they never even marched. They just won the Supreme Court case. Uh, everybody right. thinks they marched. They didn't do it, um, and that was part of the backlash. And there were, you know, so so uh, you know, I think after the Edmund Pettus Bridge, there was, uh, you know, it was kind of a softening. Although you know, that's still going on, and you know, we've got a young black man in Georgia being hunted down by guys, you know, shooting from the back of a truck. Um, so anyhow, what right. in the arc of history here? What what lessons are to be learned, Dean Ovidal? I think this is such a painful time that we're going through. I have such grave concerns for our country that I've never had before. And I often catch myself on my show, Tom, saying things that if I was a step back, I'd say, wow, this person's so hyperbolic. What is wrong with him? But I can assure you, I believe every single thing I'm saying, just like you say it. And years ago, during Bush, if I had a radio show, I would have not been saying the same line which I'm saying about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is not, Donald Trump is their leader. He's more than their leader. He's their grand wizard. Donald Trump says liberate Michigan. We know what that meant. We knew exactly what that meant. And for these people who wear boogaloo on their clothes, which means a civil war they dream of, and they wear their luau shirts, which, again, is about their civil war they dream of, they feel like they have actually an ally in the president of the United States of America. And to me, none of these people, Donald Trump didn't create. Right. The Donald Trump didn't create the three percenters or the neo-Nazis or the Aryan nation, the Aryan Brotherhood. They've been there. They just have never had in modern day an ally in the White House. They have this now. And to me, step one is November 3rd, defeating Donald Trump, really coming out and defeating him handily. Step two is then pr- pushing these fringe groups back to the fringe of society where they belong. The same way, Tom, that there are no longer two sides at least they're not supposed to be, to racism and anti-Semitism and and homophobia and anti-Muslim bigotry. And it's not always true, but that's the dream. That's what we hope for. The same thing with these guys. They have the right to speak. I'll defend their right to speak, but they should not be celebrated by the White House. They should be alienated and pressed to the fringe of society where they can meet in the basement of a bar on Tuesday nights like Fight Club and hang out and talk about how bad America 